What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 and this is the 7th September 2022 build and it does include a lot of changes. I'll show you everything that I can but first things first let me just jump into the settings and again this is how the settings panel looks like and if you're noticing this right now is kind of in a line like the profile picture is a lot more symmetric to the settings icon earlier it was not like that we still have the evolution x logo up top the android version is showing as android 13 this is how it will look and of course it has these android 13 emojis or android 13 doodles you can say so yeah a lot of emojis appear but the evolution x version if you're noticing right now showing as 7.1 so finally we have switched from 7.0 to 7.1 and if you don't know how to actually flash this custom rom on your device you can check out the description for that you can flash this rom on both f2fs and ext4 storage so you should not worry about any partition kind of issues i have made both separate guides and the security patch if you are noticing earlier it was august 2022 but right now it is september 5th 2022 so you are getting september security patch or the latest security patch right out of the box as of today and we have the soviet star kernel as the stock kernel the build date here is 7th september 2022 and the maintainer is of course talix and we have the build number right here the slx status shows as enforcing now let me jump into the system settings this is how it looks like we of course have the system updater still and you can check for updates if you want in the gesture settings right now let me actually show you in the system navigation gestures if you go into the settings of it we have the very long kind of pill length customization and just notice the pill size it is much more longer than how it was previously and yes this is on the maximum settings but there is no thickness customization as of right now but that's okay we have the back gesture animation the space under the keyboard customization is already present so that's great we have the swipe to invoke assistant 2 right now and we have the left edge right edge customization so yes these are the new things and we have the two button three button navigation still and we still have the swipe to screenshot and stuff and then we have the double tap the playback control and one handed mode everything is there quickly open camera and stuff is still there now we also have the power app volume control added and if you go into the sound settings let me actually show you that from right here we have this per app volume control so let me actually show you the per app volume control thing so if i'm playing a video right here in the volume panel just notice this is how it looks and if you click here you will see the particular app which you can adjust the volume of so per app volume is actually working fine and right now in the volume panel it actually looks dope just notice this volume panel and of course you can increase or decrease the volume from right here i'm connected to a bluetooth device that's why you cannot hear anything but you can switch the output device audio to this one too the speaker i mean and we have the like bluetooth switching option too and you can increase or decrease the volume from right here so yeah this is great that we have all these options right out of the box so part of volume control is what i'm liking glad to see the expanding feature of the volume panel is back with android 13 and of course you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here one more thing that i should talk about is the screen recorder well it has a lot of features right now earlier it was just device audio or the microphone audio switching option but right now you also get the show stop dot lower quality and the bigger file size limit then we have the skip timer etc options all these options were not there earlier but these are added in the newer update and the lock screen charging info has been finally added and the lock screen charging info shows up while charging and it looks cool i would say while charging you can see how much like at how much rate or how much speed it's charging at so that's cool the lock screen charging info is back again in android 13 and this ignore secure window level flags this was not there earlier i think so this is added too and we have the quick setting battery estimates this is added again and we have the battery style changing option right now even for the quick setting panel too you can change the style to icon landscape right or left so i have been using the icon landscape right for the status bar this is also there for the status bar and of course we have the next to the battery icon percentage and we also have this battery light customization so you can enable the battery charging light for do not disturb mode too if you want one more thing in the misc settings that you will find is the game space yes this is back again here and this was not working with the earlier update of android 13 but with the 7th september update it has been fixed even in games you can of course enable it and we have 
this notification mode and you can also show it as reticker heads up we can add any game that you want and we have this disable auto brightness disable swipe click screenshot all these features you can do from right here and the usb debugging and overlay features are also back again here but still talking about games let me tell you one thing that the new state is simply not working for me as well so if you're noticing this new state is actually stuck first launch screen so yeah it is getting stuck in the loading screen so we cannot help the new state is not working over here but other games should be working fine but only this new state is not working i think and we have the reticker added in the notification panel too let me show you the status bar and in here again we have these battery styles you can have it on left or you can have it on the right one so right now as you can see this is how the battery icon looks and we also get these many battery icon options if you want to choose a battery icon from right here it wasn't present in android 13 earlier but right now you get all of these which was there in android 12 l as well and this volume rocker wake keyboard cursor control show volume panel on the left side part of volume control everything is there in the button settings and this quick setting clock font you can actually customize right now as you can see this is how it looks the quick setting panel clock and if i want to increase the clock font size just notice the clock font size has increased so all these features are back there again and the battery estimates data usage and stuff everything you can enable in the quick setting panel one thing that i do not like that there is no fingerprint scanner icon over here still that might be added in the future updates one more bug is present over here that i do not like that is this whole display is running at very low fps after a reboot so as you can see i did not lock the screen but <laughs> just notice it is running at 30 hertz this bug was there even in android 12 but right now it's still there so after a reboot this happens do not worry guys this is not a big bug or this will not destroy your device do not worry about that but here let me actually disable the always on display so that the whole display turns off you need to make sure the whole display turns off so if i lock the device and just unlock it with the fingerprint scanner again it should be back to 60 hertz let me just refresh this page as you can see it's back on 60 hertz right now everything is like feeling smooth no issues whatsoever and right now everything is snappy so this is what is present we should not worry about it much so to fix this again you just need to lock the device once and just unlock it that's how you can fix the whole bug so yes pretty much there are a huge amount of changes in terms of the customization and this time all of the android 12 l features are getting back on android 13 so yes it will take time to get all the features on android 13 but yes it is on the path of getting all the features of android 12 l in android 13 from that point it will be a much more better experience because android 13 definitely feels a much more stable experience than android 12 l to me at least because all the animation and stuff just looks awesome just notice these animations the whole animation of everything just feels much more fluid or smooth the stock launcher is still the pixel launcher and double tapping anywhere in the blank area doesn't do anything we have to double tap on the status bar if i want to make the phone sleep and we have the subscribe account widget i just added it with a particular app because the older app was not working but yes all the other widgets like the google clock widget and stuff they are working perfectly fine no issues and even the animations are working fine now talking about one more thing the battery widget is still not working i think let me actually add it in front of you guys and let me show you so yeah if i add it it just shows loading even though i have connected to a bluetooth device and stuff it should show two separate battery kind of icons but yes the battery widget is simply not working for me as well let me know in the comments that if it's working for you but otherwise swiping up anywhere in the home screen will get you to the app drawer swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel so this is working great no problems and the animations again are working perfectly fine talking about the quick setting panel we have the always on display toggle right now it was not there earlier but it's right now present and the ambient display option is there the live display and stuff we can enable and of course there is the outdoor bright sun mode if in case you want to enable that and the anti flicker or the disarming we have the flashlight dark theme night light airplane mode the google home controls and stuff the auto rate and the screen recorder i already showed you we have this reboot toggle too if you want to use that the calculator toggle do not disturb etc is there but for some reason i cannot really find the fps info toggle or the fps counter toggle so yeah that's how it is it might be added in the future updates but as of right now there is no fps info toggle on the latest evolution x for the redmi k20 pro at least now let's talk about the battery life but before that let me go into the battery settings to show you guys the settings we still do not have battery charging cycle and stuff added so that's how it is you will not find the battery charging cycles yet 
but the battery temperature is present the battery percentage is there i think because i dirty flashed the rom with the older updates but yes it should not be present over here if it's there in the latest update it should be removed i think and we have the smart charging as well if you want to use that now talking about the battery life i have used the aku battery app and with that the battery life that i'm getting eight plus hours of screen on time almost so this is huge but i have a brand new battery over here maybe that's why i'm getting really good screen on time so yeah seven or eight hours of screen on time even with heavy usage in the health section you can see my battery health shows as 98 percent so that's actually huge but if your battery health is low or if your battery is almost three to four years old it should give you about five to six hours of screen on time while charging actually it shows the charging info right now so that's great but the fast charging is also working perfectly fine for me with the 18 watt fast charger or 33 watt fast charger fast charging over here i did not have any issues it was great experience but let me tell you the phone does get hot while fast charging with a 33 watt fast charger specifically but with 18 watt it's totally fine it doesn't get heated up at all and we are also getting the unlimited google photos and the unlock rfps in games etc you do not need to worry about those let me go back and in the sound settings we are getting the media volume and stuff then if you scroll down more we have the vibration and haptic feedbacks we have all these settings like the part app volume control the me sound enhancer is also there with the hi-fi audio preset and the other presets and we have the smart scene mode then we have the headphone presets too the sound quality overall via the headphone jack bluetooth and even the speakers and earpiece everything should be fine and the clear speaker option is also there if your speakers sound muffled you can definitely use that in the display settings we have the brightness level auto or adaptive brightness and if you want the like pickup gesture and stuff they are still there and i have the always on display on that's why it was not showing but yeah you can use either the always on display or pickup both works fine we have the control from lock device that's for the google home controls when the device is locked and we have the show device control on the lock screen and we have the wake screen for notification and stuff you can disable this if you want let me go back we have the pocket addiction the screen timeout is up to 30 minutes then we have the display size and text this is the new look of it on android 13 we have the wallpaper zoom effect the night light the live display everything is present and duplicate mode and stuff is there double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up wake up on plug and the screen of fod in the wallpaper sense styles we can choose the wallpapers from right here and of course you can change the accent colors from right here you get 16 colors for the wallpapers and you get 16 colors for the basic colors and we have the dark theme the themed icons upgrade you can set up to 5 by 5 now in terms of the security i'm pretty disappointed again because in the settings panel we only see the quick unlock and there is no face unlock no app lock present over here only the finger mid scanner screen unlocking option is present so right now let me show you the pickup gesture only so from here if i just double tap and here if i just put the device on the desk it's locked right now so if i pick it up on my hand as you can see the screen wakes up so the pickup gesture is actually working flawlessly no issues whatsoever with that right now let me show you the screen of fingerprint scanner so the screen is off right now i'm just tapping the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it has unlocked let me show you one more time so if i'm just pressing and holding over here as you can see the device just unlocks so yeah no issues with the fingerprint scanner at all it unlocks 100 percent of the time and just notice the speed even from the screen of fod but here let me just enable the always on display for the time being if i just do that and here and the animation and stuff everything is working fine of the double tap to wake and stuff just notice how smooth it is and here if i just tap the thing with scanner in the always on display it unlocks let me try one more time and yes you do get the like big kind of lock screen clock over here and yes it is a lot more thinner in the always on display and a lot more thicker in the lock screen i would say and yes as you can see it is working fine and the google home controls if you are willing to see that yes it should work okay so this slide is offline let me just enable this one i know you cannot see that it is there so yeah i can see the light is turning on and off i don't have to unlock the device to actually like, turn on this light or turn off this light so that's great the google home controls are working fine right from the lock screen but then again the fingerprint scanner i do not see any issues whatsoever but yes there is no fingerprint scanner icon changing option as of right now but it works perfectly fine and talking about the basic things yes safety net and stuff should pass right out of the box you should not worry about using banging apps on this rom although i don't have a sim card in this device vault calling are also working fine you should not worry about that either in the dear info it shows the security level as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p overall performance was great i did not face any issues at all 
and here let me actually show you the twitter scrolling too if you guys are worried about it the split top feature and stuff everything is working fine you should not worry about those at all and here just notice the scrolling of twitter is working perfectly fine there is no jitteriness at all but yes i do miss the 72 hertz it is still running at 60 hertz all over the ui so maybe in future we will get the 72 hertz but as of right now we don't get that and here are the android and geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build to get you guys an idea about the whole UI's performance. Now talking about camera, yes, this ROM has a like really old kind of Google camera which is looking like pretty basic, this UI, I don't really like it. That's why I have installed the like newer Gcam. So this is the MGC Gcam, okay, so one of my lights turned off for some reason but yeah. Let me actually show you, this is the MGC Gcam and this is actually working perfectly fine. The front camera and stuff should be working perfectly fine if you are noticing. So no issues with the front camera and there is a portrait mode, night sight mode, everything is working fine. There is a zooming effect and with the rear camera too, you can shoot videos and stuff. And with this we have the FHD 60fps and we have the 4K 60fps as well. And we also get the mic switching option. I'll list this Gcam in the description, you should not worry. And if you want to like know about the picture taking shutter speed, just notice how fast and snappy it takes the pictures. No issues whatsoever with this camera that I have faced. Or you can use your preferred Gcam if you want. But let me tell you, ANX camera is not yet working over here as far as I know. So if you are someone who does not need ANX camera, you can definitely go for this ROM. That's how I feel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video with your friends. If you want them to know about the latest Android 13 best Evolution X ROM on a Redmi K20 Pro and how it's working. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.